Lift off will start in T minus 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Indian Space Agency captured the world's attention during India's first successful Mars mission, which cost $74 million compared to NASA's Mars mission in the same week, which cost nine times as much. The roots of India's space program are much deeper than the rest of the world realizes. The world's largest democracy has had a space program since 1969, when the government established the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO, under the visionary leadership of Vikram Ambalal Sarabhai, an Indian physicist and astronomer who initiated space research and helped develop nuclear power in India. In 2020, the Indian government pledged to establish a private sector for space research and development lead to India's own SpaceX-type ventures. One of the pioneers of such an initiative is Anirudh Sharma, who graduated from engineering college just two years ago, but the 23-year-old Anirudh Sharma is marking a revolution. He established a company in June 2022 named Digantra, which translates to space in Sanskrit, and launched what's arguably the world's first commercial space-based space weather system, whose technology, he says, is kind of like Google Maps for space. Isn't it cool? He says Indian private space companies are, in fact, growing faster than SpaceX, the American billionaire techie Elon Musk's space empire, which is valued at over $100 billion. Other countries are recognizing that India is going to be huge in space, and it will continue to grow. The global space economy is worth nearly half a trillion dollars, with the U.S. and China as the biggest spenders. India currently makes up a mere 2% of it. But experts say things are changing at a pace that makes the country the next big thing in outer space. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi mentioned Digantra in his monthly radio show as part of India's cutting-edge space companies that the world should look out for. By 2021, Digantra had raised millions in seed funding. It is India's first private company that's ready to send 40 satellites to identify and potentially clean up space junk. Space junk moves at 15 times the speed of a bullet and can smash spacecraft into pulp. The space junk monitoring market is, by one estimate, worth $2.9 billion this year. A big part of this change is India's shift toward the privatization of space exploration. There have been over 100 active space startups since 2012, according to the Economic Survey of India. Many of them are currently jostling to be authorized by the newly minted InSpace, or the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center, an agency that acts as a link between ISRO and private sector companies. Digantra is one of the two private companies to have received authorizations so far. Vinod Kumar, director of promotions at InSpace, told Vice World News the department had received about 150 proposals from private space companies since 2020. He predicts India will make up at least 10% of the global space economy in the next decade, up from the current 2%. The biggest impact of privatization is the independence and financial support given to the private players. ISRO has over 350 private partners, putting the country in fifth place globally in terms of the strength of private companies in the space sector. But their role was restricted to building components for ISRO. It was only a matter of time for the government to empower private companies in the space sector. The time has now come to create newer space tech and on-demand launch services, which will require commercial players' participation complementing that of ISRO. The competition is intense. NASA has captivated global imaginations when it comes to space, from being the first to send humans to the moon to commanding missions to Mars. It collaborates closely with private companies such as SpaceX and was given $30.62 billion by the U.S. government this year. Russia, the early space superpower with which the U.S. has a history of cooperation, has hit a rough patch this year with the country's invasion of Ukraine and is operating on a $2.97 billion state budget. China's space program had an estimated government budget of $13 billion in 2020, with nearly a billion dollars invested in private space. Compared to other countries, India has a limited space budget of $1.7 billion this year. In this race for space, the United States owns 1,650 space assets while China has 450. India has 80 so far. Experts are optimistic about the Indian program, despite recent geopolitical shifts. For one thing, India sets a high standard for displaying and supplying competitive space technology and manufacturing at a fraction of global costs. The best example is India's first Mars mission in 2014. Space is unforgiving, with zero margin for error. 
So while ISRO has been able to build technology and systems that are affordable, they are also reliable and of good quality. In India, there's also no lack of manpower either. A new report by the Indian Space Association and Ernst & Young predicts that India's space economy is expected to be worth $13 billion in 2025. While its satellite manufacturing sector is expected to be worth $3.2 billion in 2025, a huge jump from half a billion in 2020. Narayan Prasad, co-founder of India's first space think tank, Spaceport Sarabhai, told Vice World News that India is looking at its own Henry Ford moment, where India has emerged as the favorite choice in the global space market. With China being seen as unreliable collaborators and Russia's war impeding global trust, India stands out in a unique place with its space capabilities, ability to do business, and the right mix of talent and infrastructure, he said. There's literally no limit to what can be achieved. Druwa Space, one of the two private companies authorized by InSpace, said it started in 2012 with the aim to privatize space activity in India. But things weren't so great. The market was not very receptive to space entrepreneurs trying to build a full solution, therefore there was not much access to capital. Druwa, which designs space missions and builds space infrastructure for India and international clients, found a lease of life in 2020. In an ecosystem where vendors that replicate and build space parts have been thriving for decades, companies like Druwa now have enough capital to build indigenous products and shore up intellectual property. For the next two quarters, they want to not just take technological leaps, but also enable global customers to launch their own satellites on Druwa's deployers. India's new space economy is on the edge of liftoff and I foresee a striking new era of tech investment. In fact, it's already happening. Kumar, the journalist, says the country is still in the process of becoming the go-to place for space technology and manufacturing for the global market. While rich countries will be able to leapfrog given the capital and purchasing power, this might not possible for others, therefore giving a chance to countries like India to supply, he said. But more government funding is needed for space diplomacy and for India to become a bigger. The next big thing in India's business of space is defense. Last year, the then Indian Chief of Defense Staff General Bipin Rawat said space is critical to operations both in peace and conflict, and that the privatization of space will be essential to that. This year, Digantara set up India's first private space situational awareness observatory on the foothills of the Himalayas. It monitors satellites. This will bring indigenous capabilities to the nation for both military and civilian applications, said Anirudh Sharma. India's private space empire may have started 50 years after the world's first moon landing, but many in the industry feel the country's private companies aren't here just to win it. Apart from taking India's dreams to outer space, several space technology companies are working to bridge the gap between space technology and addressing problems unique to the Indian subcontinent. A company called Numer8, for instance, predicts climate change patterns to help fishermen. Another startup called Vassar Labs uses satellite imagery to advise governments on climate change's impact on India's water resources. Another startup called Skylo developed, among other things, agriculture sensors that measure and deploy soil nutrient and watering needs in India, where 70% of rural households depend on agriculture. India will benefit from the convergence of infrastructure, experience, talent, capital, and the global market's openness to engage with the country and build space products that will benefit not only businesses and the government, but also citizens. Hey.